Imagine you do a computation today. If you want to repeat the same computation tomorrow, you would need to type it in again. Or if you have just typed it in and you are not sure whether you made an error or not, you would need to retype it as well. So we would like to have a way to record computations, be it for communication purposes or checking purposes or storage purposes. So in the same way as we have used the memories or the variables to store values, we would like now to store the whole program. Some calculators have a paper roll that prints the computations as we type them. In this way, we have a record of our computation. We call this record a program. A program is for now a sequence of simple calculations that has been recorded in some persistent way. Now, it would be just great if we could reuse the program, that the program would not only be the record output by the calculator, but also a possible input. We would like to be able to fit this program to the calculator as instructions to perform the calculation again. Now our calculator is becoming closer to a computer. We can find other examples where we record things for late execution. A recipe is a series of instructions to cook a meal. The chef there interprets the recipe and cooks the meal. The recipe is the equivalent to the program. Another example is a sequence of directions to find an address in the city. Take the first to the right, the second to the left, etc. Now this series of instructions of directions is the equivalent to the program. A further example, a sequence of instructions to draw a figure. Draw a line to the right, two centimeters, turn right 90 degrees, etc. So this sequence of instructions now is our program. In each of these examples, we see that there's a set of basic instructions that are clearly executable. One instruction can be x equal 1 plus 2, or boil an egg, or take the first tree to the right, or draw a black line of 2 centimeters from the current point to the right. The set of instructions has to be well defined and each of the instructions has to be effectively executable by the entity in charge, in this case, our computer. So far, we have only seen a very basic set of instructions. We will enrich this set in coming lessons. Now, these basic instructions are normally text. There might be visual representation occasionally, but in general, they are written in textual form. What we have to do is to learn these instructions in text and use them well in order to write correct programs. A calculator looks like follows with the, latex, with the last extension. The display now shows a history of statements. This is what we call the program. So we have seen several possible displays. The display, the first display was only able to show a number, a value. The next display showed the last expression. With introduction of variables, we introduce the assignment statement that can be shown in the appropriate display. And finally, we have seen now that we want to record the history to display it either on paper or in digital form, and we call this history program. Apart from recording the history, we are also able to input the history of this program to the calculator, and we have a very simple computer. So, in summary, a program is nothing else than the recorded computation, a record of the computation. It can be written on a piece of paper or stored in some other way, for example, in the digital way, in the memory of a computer. So, we are capturing a sequence of actions in persistent form. And the computer interprets this program and performs the computation each time it is requested to do so. A computer makes the program come alive by producing some behavior over time.